In this video on normal distributions and the standard normal distribution, we learn about the z-score, or z-value. We're going to learn how to use the formula, as well as how to interpret the results. And to do all that, we're going to work through the example we see here, in which we're told that the time taken to run 200 meters follows a normal distribution with mean mu which equals to 31 seconds, and standard deviation sigma which equals to 3 seconds. We're then told Michael runs 200 meters in 24 seconds, John runs it in 31 seconds, and Paul runs it in 39 seconds. And the first thing we have to do, question 1, is find the z-score for each of the runner's times. Ok, well let me start by writing s-o-l here for a solution, and we'll start by answering question 1. Now whether or not we're asked, when given a problem like this one, it's always a good idea to illustrate the information we have on a bell curve. Nothing particularly fancy, just a very generic bell curve, so I'll say this is my x-axis, and I draw a bell curve above it, something looking like that. In fact I could extend that x-axis, couldn't I? There we go. Ok. And so we were told that we're dealing with a normal distribution, whose mean mu is 31 seconds, and so I'll add that mean right in the middle of the bell curve. There we go, at the bottom there on the x-axis, that's mu equals to 31. And the fact that the standard deviation is 3 seconds, and in fact I'll box it as well, 3 seconds, well that tells us that the horizontal distance from the mean to the two points of inflection on this curve, which would be here and here, is equal to 3 units. And so I could add that to my illustration as well. There we go, just adding some dots down to the x-axis. The distance from the mean here is equal to the standard deviation, which is 3, so that's 31 minus 3, which is 28. And over here we have 31 plus 3, which would be 34. And I should say, if you're not sure of what I mean when I say points of inflection, those are the points along the curve at which it changes concavity. The part of the curve I'm hovering over right now is concave down, and the two parts on either side of those points are concave up. And so these two points of inflection mark those changes in concavity. That being said, I carry on. The next thing I'll add on my bell curve here are the times in which each of these runners ran 200 meters. So let's see, Michael ran it in 24 seconds. And so 24 seconds on the x-axis, well, that would be somewhere down here. So I'll just jot that down right here, I'll say 24 is there. Next we have John who ran it in 31 seconds. And 31 seconds, well that's equal to the mean, so that would be right here on the x-axis. And last but not least we have Paul who ran 200 meters in 39 seconds. And so I'll say that 39 is somewhere right here. 39. There we go. Ok, that's the information given in the question illustrated on a bell curve. And now, when we're asked to find the z-score for each of these runner's times, what we're really being asked for is what do these three values, 24, 31, and 39, turn into on the graph of the standard normal distribution's bell curve. And the standard normal distribution has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And so I'll make a quick sketch of it right here. We'll have a bell curve looking something like this. And it's centered at the origin, like so. So this would be 0. We'd have a vertical axis here, and our horizontal axis in this case is known as the z-axis, or z-axis. And in the upper right hand corner of this bell curve, let me just say it again, the standard normal distribution has a mean value of 0, which is why it's centered at the origin here, and a standard deviation of 1. And to get from our bell curve to the standard normal bell curve, we use a transformation. And for that transformation, there's a very specific formula we need to know. And I'll write it in the upper right hand corner of the screen. The formula states that for any of the x values we have on our normal distribution curve, its corresponding z values on the standard normal distribution curve are given by z equals to x minus mu over sigma. And I'll go ahead and box that. Do make a note of this formula. And the z that we have here, which is the same as on this horizontal axis here, is known as the standard normal variable. Standard normal variable. And it's commonly called the z-score. And when placing any value of x inside this formula, we often say that we're standardizing the normal variable. 
And so, to be clear, to get from our normal bell curve to the standard normal bell curve, we go through the transformation in which z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. Okay, all that being said, let's go ahead and use this formula to calculate the z-score for Michael. And in fact, I'll write it up here, I'll say Michael. And in Michael's case, he ran it in 24 seconds, so I'll say that x is equal to 24. Now, copying this formula but replacing x by 24, the mean mu by 31, and the standard deviation sigma by 3, this turns into z equals to 24 minus 31 over 3. And to calculate that, we can move over to our calculator and we enter the entire numerator inside its own pair of parentheses, so that would be 24 minus 31. I exit the parentheses and I divide that by 3. And I click on Enter. And we're done. Rounding what we see on the calculator screen to three significant figures, Michael's z score is z equals to negative 2.33. And I'll go ahead and box that result. There we go. Now, what does this z value actually tell us? Well, a couple of things. First of all, the fact that the z value is negative tells us that Michael's z score is to the left of the mean. So, under the standard normal bell curve, that z value is to the left of zero, which is normal as his time, 24 seconds, was to the left, in other words, less than the mean time, 31. The second thing this z score tells us is that Michael's time, 24 seconds, is 2.33 standard deviations away from the mean. And in fact, if we were to say that negative 1 is here, the negative 2 would be somewhere here, negative 3 would be somewhere here, and Michael's z-score would be somewhere right here. And I'll annotate that, that's negative 2.33. And so the whole idea behind z-scores and standardization is to turn the numerical value of each of our observations into a direct measure of how many standard deviations away from the mean that observation is. And for negative values, it's less than the mean, and a positive z-value, or positive z-score, will be greater than the mean. That being said, let's go ahead and calculate the z-scores for John and Paul. And I'll write John at the top here. There we go, that's for John. And John, remember, ran 200 meters in 31 seconds. So in his case, x is equal to 31. Again, using the formula we have here, we replace x by 31, mu by 31, and sigma by 3. And so that tells us that John's z-score is equal to 31 minus 31 over 3. And of course, 31 minus 31, well that's 0, and 0 divided by 3, well, it's 0 as well. So John's z-score is equal to 0. And that should make sense. Indeed, since John's time is equal to the mean, it's at exactly zero standard deviations away from the mean. And so, under the standard normal bell curve, the corresponding z-score to 31, well, it's right here at the origin. And so I'll add my little red dot right here. Finally, the z-score for Paul, who runs the 200 meters in 39 seconds, well, let's see, I'll write that here, Paul, 39 seconds, so x equals to 39, the z-score will be equal to 39 minus the mean, which is 31, so that's 39 minus 31, over the standard deviation, which again is 3. So that's over 3. And we can move over to our calculator for that, and again we enter the numerator inside of pair parentheses, so that's 39 minus 31, exit parentheses, and divide that by 3. Enter. And there we go. Rounding to three significant figures, Paul's z-score is equal to 2.67. And we're done. Notice here that Paul's z-score is positive, which tells us we're on the right-hand side of the mean, and I'll say that 2.67 is roughly here, so that's 2.67. There we go. So in summary, Michael's time of 24 seconds is 2.33 standard deviations less than the mean, John's time of 31 seconds is at zero standard deviations away from the mean, and Paul's time, 39 seconds, is 2.67 standard deviations greater than the mean. Okay, we now know how to calculate a z-score as well as what it means. So let's move on to question two. And in question two, we're told Michael also runs the 400 meter race in 46 seconds. 
Given that the time taken to complete this race also follows a normal distribution but with mean mu 68 seconds and standard deviation sigma 8 seconds, find the z-score for his time at this race and compare it to his time at the 200 meter race. Okay, well as I always do, what I'll start by doing is illustrating this information on a bell curve. And again, I do that on a very generic bell curve, something looking like this. There we go. That's my bell curve with an x-axis. And the mean for this bell curve was given to us in the question. Here it is. It's 68 seconds. Okay, so that x value is 68. And that's mu. And the standard deviation here, so we have the two points of inflection there and there. The standard deviation in this case is 8 seconds. So I could add that here. I could say 60 here and 76 here. There we go. Okay, so that's the bell curve for the 400 meter race. And the first one we had over here, that was for the 200 meter race. Remember, we were told that Michael runs this 400 meter race in 46 seconds. And 46, well, that would be somewhere over here. So I'll write 46 there on the x-axis. And now to transform this bell curve into the standard normal bell curve, the method is the same. And we're still going to be using our standard normal variable formula. The only difference being the values of mu and sigma. So let's go ahead. I'll go ahead and say that z is equal to x, which is equal to 46, so that's 46, minus the mean value, which in this case, remember, is 68, that's 46 minus 68, divided by the standard deviation sigma, which in this case is 8. So that's divided by 8. Now, entering all of this into our calculator, we open up a pair of parentheses for the numerator, so that's 46 minus 68. We exit the parentheses and we divide that by the standard deviation 8. And we click on enter. Michael's z-score for the 400 meter race is equal to negative 2.75. And I'll go ahead and box that result. Now on the z-axis under the standard normal bell curve, negative 2.75 would be somewhere over here. And I'll label that as well, that's negative 2.75. And so what we notice here, and just so I'm clear with the colors here, 46 seconds on the 400 meter race corresponds to a z-score of negative 2.75. And what we notice here is that negative 2.75 is further away from the mean than negative 2.33. And when it comes to running a race, you want to be as far to the left of the mean as possible since that means that you take less time to run it. And doing this type of comparison is one of my favorite things about the z-score. It allows me to state that based on this information alone, it seems as though Michael is better suited for the 400 meter race than he is for the 200 meter race. It's also worth pointing out that in both cases, Michael is more than two standard deviations away from the mean. And if you're familiar with the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule, then you'll know that 95% of observations lie within two standard deviations of the mean. And so given that Michael's times are both further than two standard deviations to the left of the mean, tells us that Michael is a very fast runner. And there we go. Thanks to these z-scores, we're able to compare Michael's times, 24 seconds and 46 seconds, for two completely different races, 200 meters and 400 meters. And we're even able to draw the conclusion that Michael seems better suited for the 400 meter race. And all that being said, that's it for this tutorial.